for my team does not want me to make this video. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ida. Jackie, 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 My voice is back, Jackie. And with my normal speaking voice. And before you say anything about my damn wig, she's brand new. I haven't got a chance to really, you know, blend the lace yet. So I don't want to hear Nathan. I don't want to hear Nathan about people who love to judge me in 4K. <laughs> So I'm actually getting ready to go to a party, orty, orty tonight. And I figured since you guys love hearing me ramble about most topics, we would do a get ready with us. Get ready with us. I actually like that. Instead of get ready with me, get ready with us. Let's get ready together. Grab your makeup kit, grab your blush, and let's do the damn thing together. This isn't just any normal makeup tutorial. I'm going to be doing an unpopular opinion about one of your favorite fashion brands. Unfortunately, I can't say the name of the brand. I'll, I'll say enough so that you, you'll, you'll, you'll know. You'll know what I'm talking about. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's just something that has been like really brewing me about like Instagram brands in general for a while now. I'm going to be highlighting some of the problems with the main perpetrator of those fast fashion brands in today's video. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Like I said, please pause the video, grab your primer. Let's go get ready together. Okay, so I'm setting the atmosphere. I'm lighting my fresh sake candle. This candle smells so good. I actually didn't think I would like it because I thought sake, what the? I mean, I know what sake is, but I tend to like more sweeter. This thing is really fuming. Anyway, if a candle's not labeled vanilla bean, I'm basically like not even interested. So like, I won't even give the scent a shot, but I really like that candle. But anyway, that's not why you're here. You're here for the makeup and for the tea. This is a video I thought long and hard about doing because this is a brand that I've actually worked with. I'm doing this video, one, because I'm super, super passionate about this topic. This brand in particular happens to be arguably the most, the most, the most, popular fast fashion brand out there right now. With this brand, it's one of those where there's smoke or fire. I think the damn fire done bulldozed the whole company of like, it's damn near just, it's too obvious to ignore. I started shopping for this brand about two years before I actually started working with them. I ultimately stopped because of the issues that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. I have my skin tune blur. And yes, I do got a couple nails missing. Mind your own business. I'm honestly really tired of seeing Insta bodies being the only the only look, the only standard now. And you know what an Insta body is. Even if you don't know what Insta bodies mean, you've seen an Insta body. You've 100% seen an Insta body. Insta body I would describe as big old donkey booty, 50 inch booty to a 22 inch waist. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it being the only. To me, I feel like right now what we're seeing with that is like the equivalent. Okay, I'm gonna take my NARS powder now. Powder up my face, powder up. So I feel like a lot of what we're seeing with Insta bodies is very similar to what we saw in the 90s. Thin was in. A particularly, dare I say, dangerously type of thin was in. I'm pro body positivity movement, but I feel like kind of people have found a loophole to be like, yeah, let's do this now. And it's like, whoa, 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 slow down, slow down, time out, time, 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 time out. It's, there's nothing wrong with being thin, but then there's a difference between being like thin and like, like, whoa, that's a little dangerous. With some insta bodies, like, that bothers me that people are striving for a body type that like, literally just looks like we invented this new shape. Of course, there's exceptions to every norm. Okay, I'm gonna take Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup from Ms. Estee Lauder. But you know what? This foundation dries down really fast and I just powdered my face, so hold on. Just a couple sprays of Fix Plus. And now that Ms. Lauder has given us a pump. <laughs> Back to what the hell I was saying. What's going on? I really don't want this video to be taken out of context and taken the wrong way. Obviously I'm pro plastic surgery because I've done it. I got my boobs done last year, so that's not what this is about. I think what bothers me the most about it is like, I go on certain brands pages and that's the only thing we see. Like there should be some type of balance. Like I wanna see curvy women. And I don't mean just hourglass curves. I mean uh, curves everywhere. Thin women too, that's cool. Like if there's a balance, and it's also gotta be really damaging for people who aren't shaped like that. If that's all you see all day, you're gonna be looking in the mirror like, well, what the hell is wrong with me? I got a little something, something in the mid range. What's wrong with that? I, I just don't like the fact that like, to me, I go on their page and I see the extreme. I see the extreme all the time. I mean, let's also be really real. Like the black market for plastic surgery is 
also still very rampant. A lot of people are getting stuff done to say that they got it done, but like at the hands of someone who's not even licensed, not even a real doctor. They're getting all this crazy stuff done because they're trying to keep up with a standard that they're constantly seeing on their explore page by way of some of these brands. Some of it may not even be at the hands of plastic surgery. Some of it could be at the hands of, of you know, face tuning and Photoshopping. A lot of it could be like smoke and mirrors and stuff like that. Okay, cool. You know, I, I can't for sure say, because now that I have my boobs done, I'm starting to kind of be like, oh, yeah, that's a boob job. Before, I never knew what that looked like. Like, I was kind of naive and I was kind of like, she could be born with that though. I don't know, man. That's kind of like up for debate. Now, like, I could totally see totally see it. By the way, real quick, if you're this knee deep into the conversation, and if this is your fifth Jackie Anna video you've watched today, you might as well join the Jackie Anna family. Why the hell not? It's free 99 sis, and I know you're gonna keep watching my damn videos, and don't be the person who six months from now was like, you know what? I never quite realized why I didn't subscribe, because you're a hater. I ask because sometimes people just don't even think to do it, and now I'm telling you, hey, this offer's on the table, why don't you take it, gobble it up. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we back to contour, we're like, let's see a little, whatever. The point that I'm getting at is the unrealistic body standards that I feel this brand contributes to. And I, clearly they do it on purpose because like you don't post all of these people on your pages by coincidence. You just don't, okay? They obviously know what they're doing and I'm saying that. I am tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. But the problem is some people are desperately trying to keep up with it at the hands of going under the knife, you know, under the table or illegally, you know, spending their rent money to do this. And it's like, don't do that just to be reposted on some of these pages, please don't. And I know I understand it might be easier for me to say, but like, I still have to say it. I still have to say it because it shouldn't just be one person saying these things. Now I'm gonna do pro filter under my eyes and around my mouth. So the next big, 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 big problem that I feel this brand really contributes to is the C word, colorism. Who wants to be a colorist today? Dun, 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 dun. Every time I go on this page, the majority of women I see are either light-skinned black women, biracial women, or they're racially ambiguous. It could be one thing, it could be something else, you don't really know. Not that I have a problem with them being represented in beauty or fashion, I don't. But when that's the only thing I see on your page, hmm, why is it? that as much as this brand posts on platforms like The Shade Room, let's roll up our sleeves and talk about it. Because who is the average demographic of The Shade Room? Let's just think about that for a second, please. You clearly know who your audience is because you're advertising to them. You're spending lots of money to advertise to your demographic, but I don't see them properly represented on your page when I go and look on your page. I have a big problem with that. A friend of mine who is also a YouTuber, she actually had an email exchange with this company, basically raising concerns, like what's the tea with who y'all posting your Instagram? Why don't I ever see more diversity on your page? And um, you know, like, let's talk about it. She actually also worked with this brand. I guess they had sent her like a box and um, her and her friend hosted. Anyway, I'm just gonna read the emails. I'm gonna read the emails while I blend out my concealer. So of course we are not going to out this YouTuber. She did give me permission to share this information with you guys, but I'm gonna respect her privacy. You know, because when I do these videos, you guys, I really do actually put my career on the line. I know that you think this whole complaining thing is so easy and fun, but I don't do what like a lot of other people just do on Twitter while they sit on their grandma's couches. Like I actually have to like, face these people and these brands in real life and be held accountable in real life when I say things. I could be potentially, I don't know. I don't know what could happen from making this video. I'm gonna go ahead and read the exchange that this YouTuber had with this brand when she held their feet to the fire and you know, just asked them very directly why they don't post more women of color. Even though we all know women of color is not just black women, I believe what she was trying to say was like, you know, people of like darker complexions, but anyway. I'll get there. So she said, hey, expect one tomorrow. Do you mind if I ask you a serious question? I'm guessing she means Instagram posts by expect one tomorrow, but I won't speculate. Um, they responded back and said, hello. Them being the brand said, hey, what's your question? And she said, well, I'm not sure how to go about this, but I was wondering how come the Instagram page hardly posts women of color? How come it's just not that often? It's just something I've noticed and it bothered me a little because I'm a woman of color myself. If I'm representing a brand, I would like it if they represented more people like me, if that makes sense. I hope you take no offense to this because it's not my intention to offend anyone. It's just something I've become aware of, so I thought I'd ask about it. Now I'm gonna take my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind and blend while we get into the rest of these emails, honey. 
it's a new one, so you know, the clicks. All right, so the follow-up response to that email was, so sorry if you think that we intentionally don't post women of color. I went through her Instagram and was a little confused. Oh, were you, sweetie? <laughs> Wonder why. All our models are either Hispanic or African American. Yes, we do have white models as well. As a matter of fact, here are the links to three models we have booked this week, in parentheses, all women of color. Then she linked Anna Montana's Instagram. She linked Charm Killing's Instagram. She linked Amber Grace. I feel like she's being a little disingenuous trying to pretend like she doesn't know what she's talking about. I, I kind of do, because all of these women are all of lighter complexion. N none of these women are dark, so. And see, unfortunately, because she asked her, women of color is kind of a vague term. I do feel like sometimes people throw it around a little too loosely, just a little too loosely. Unfortunately, because she wasn't really specific, you just sent her profiles of three women that are all within this relatively the same complex, relatively, relatively, not the exact same, but relatively within the same complexion category. None of those women are dark skinned women. And I'm not even just talking about black women. I'm saying they could have been, you could have named a dark skinned Asian woman. Then to continue the email, she goes, as for the reposts we do, they are never based on color. Okay, but coincidentally, you only see the same two colors. I sent over the requirements for our repost. The customer's or influencer's photos must be a full body shot with great lighting and the item they're wearing must be fully stocked in order for us to repost and promote it on our page. Otherwise, customers will get upset that we're promoting an item that does not have so many stocks in size or sizes in stock. Again, sorry if you think otherwise. Then the follow-up. So after reading your last email, I decided to go check out your website again and I realized that so far I posted three photos featuring your clothing. Two of the photos professionally taken by a photographer and you guys have not posted not one of them on your page and every item I'm wearing is in stock and available on the website. <laughs> Yikes. Then that person goes, uh, this jacket is sold out in both smalls and mediums, blah, blah, blah. She's basically giving her like a breakdown of saying, well, this item you wore was out of stock in a large. This one was out of stock in medium. Um, and then she goes, like I have mentioned before, the reposts are never guaranteed. It's a little snarky that that part of the email was underlined. We never offer a repost to any influencer or costume because they are never guaranteed. The requirements will help a lot, but they are still not guaranteed. I have no control of Instagram, nor can I repost anything on my own. If you were concerned about your own repost from the beginning, you could have just asked. If you no longer wish to work with us because we aren't reposting your photos, then I will send over a return shipping label so you can return the items we most recently sent to you. It was great working with you and thanks for your time. First of all, who the hell says that just because you send an influencer stuff that they have to post your product? That goes both ways because we get a lot of stuff in PR and I don't like this whole like, well, we don't have to post you. Okay, well then if you send the items, you send them on good faith that I may or may not post them to my own liking because as far as I'm concerned, and this is no shade, but these brands need influencers more than the other way around. You can continue to do product placements in music videos, but like how effective is that? You clearly see the value in working with influencers because every freaking influencer works with this brand. Every influencer works with this brand. Every influencer you can even think of. Even the ones that aren't even influencers yet are already working with this fashion brand. Now the remainder of these emails, I just, in my opinion, are just completely in poor fashion. The influencer followed up by saying, I don't need to be reposted. <laughs> I don't need your itch. So I don't need to be reposted. I already have my own following. I was just pointing out that because as I mentioned in my last email, your page hardly posts women of color. I'm not the only one that notices and that's why I expressed my thoughts in my last email. I'm no longer interested in working with your company. If you can't understand where I'm coming from, then there's no point in doing business with me. Have a nice day. Then the response from the brand was, yes, but like I had mentioned before, I have no control over it. And I also try to explain to you how we always work with women of color, whether it's our models or our influencers. We love working with everyone. But if you cannot understand that, then that's fine. See that part right there, I don't like how you just regurgitated what was in the previous email and just spun it back. Like. It's snarky. The content of this email is clearly snarky. But if you cannot understand, that's fine. Thank you for your time and your post. I will send over a return shipping label for the most recent package we sent over. Thanks again for your collaboration. Have a nice day. I mean, I just feel like it's just all around ghetto. When you are a multi-million dollar company, you've sent out products that really are insanely cheap, extremely expensive, and you're asking for them back. I just feel like you couldn't write that $150 as a loss, you know? Like, I don't, that's just so ghetto to me. It's so hood, what kind of hood is this? I just feel like they're being 
extremely vindictive. This was an email dated in 2015. I don't follow this brand's page on Instagram. And at the time that I actually started working with them, I didn't follow them on Instagram either. I didn't see the need in following them at all. I just ordered their stuff, got what I like, and then they were like, oh, we wanna work with you now. So I was like, okay, cool, cute. They got coin come through and they came through. <sighs> My team does not want me to make this video. I'm taking this NARS Soft Velvet Loose Powder. The color that I'm gonna use is Beach. Can I also just say real quick though, it's really tacky how this brand has a second Instagram page. And I feel like that's where they post their leftovers. Like it's very clear to me, like I hate when people say, well, we don't choose based on color, but like there's a very clear difference in how they post on their main Instagram page. versus their second curvier page. Like, don't insult our intelligence very clear and I actually would apply their second Instagram page in my opinion for being a bit more well-rounded like I definitely see more darker people on that page which I think is great I just don't see why you don't consistently across the board do that on both pages though they look very different oh I'm the bronze too with my Anastasia I don't know why I said that like I was so surprised I love this damn expensive brush it's so damn expensive for no reason this is where I feel like my face just really comes to life. Now the party don't start till I walk in with bronzer. I'm applying some multi-sculpting concealer for my shadow base. Now we're gonna put a little bronzer right at the head of the brow. And by the way, it's not that I think all of the girls that this brand posts on their page all look the same, but what I'm saying is they all kind of have a similar vibe, similar complexion. I'm gonna be using Miss Daisy Marquez's new palette from BH Cosmetics. It's really cute. It looks like a little gift. And then you do this. You got a little built-in mirror station. Cute little vanity. Congratulations, Miss Daisy. So first I'm gonna take Hit the Road from Dose of Colors. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that first. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Backtrack, false alarm. I'm gonna take a little bit of Vintage from the Shadow Palette and Bittersweet from the Shadow Palette. These two colors here. But first, let's set some powder down. Just in case there's fallout be. 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 All right, so let's just backtrack about what we've discussed so far. Talked about the colorism, just the lack of, I guess, proper body representation on their pages, how they dangerously kind of peddle a unrealistic beauty standard. It's extremely unrealistic to assume that everyone has a 22 inch waist. So those are like my main main, 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 main bones. I have to pick up this brand. Oh, and the colorism, of course. How can I forget the colors? Yeah, it's just really bad. It's, it's too much to ignore. The responses when called out on it, hmm, really tacky. And might I also say obtuse for you to say, well, we do post women of color, but they all kind of relatively have the same or similar, similar look. In no way saying or insinuating all light-skinned women look the same by any means, no way. I'm adding a little bit of stunt. Is that what this color is called? Oh, just kidding, it's called vintage. I'm adding a little bit of vintage back to my crease area so you can see the orange peeking up a little bit more. Then I'm gonna take my dose of colors, cream eyeliner in the shade Hit the Road. We're gonna apply Hit the Road as close to the lash line as possible because we're gonna pop a matte shadow on top of it. You know what you can do if you're really scared of going too high? The cream shadow on your lid like this, you can actually flip the brush upside down and then blend up. Passion fruit, ooh, passionate from miles away. Passing with the things you say. Passing up on my eyes, I can't blame it all. All right, we're gonna put passion fruit 
right on top. You guys, that looks really good with my hair color, just saying. So let's just talk about my uh, relationship with this brand shall we my story of why i started working with them is really no different from how i start working with any brand i like their stuff so then they hit me up and they're like hey we saw you posted for us we'd love to pay you and i'm like duh you know like i've been a customer for a while like and they had actually been hitting me up but like i just didn't really feel like working with them i don't know why to be honest i don't know i guess i just didn't take them serious i don't know why. I, I don't know why and that's not to be mean but like i really just didn't they finally hit me up and they were saying all the right things it actually sounded like they had a deal that i would be willing to to take so i was like okay cool sometimes it is nicer to just keep the relationship not paid or anything just because you just that's just what you want to do you're just not driven or moved to work with them despite what a lot of people think about influencers not everything is about money. I'm gonna take Urban Decay. This is a really cool liner. It's like this fun electric green shifty. No, just kidding. I don't wanna wear that. I changed my mind. I don't love you no more. This is Zero from Urban Decay. Oh, I forgot my brow gel. Dang it. ABH, I really like these brow gels. The color that I'm using is dark brown. I'm gonna blend passionate from miles away along my bottom lash line. All right, so basically, yeah, like we was talking numbers and stuff like that and the brand had a cute little, cute little offer. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll do these posts, whatever. As far as like a brand, working with them as a brand, they were one of the easiest brands to work with. They pretty much gave me free range to do anything. They paid a wonderful amount beautiful amount of quaint. Everything was right, but like, ultimately I just started kind of noticing, yeah, like why don't they post? Hmm, their Instagram is quite interesting. I had a conversation with that influencer, the one whose emails I shared earlier, and I don't even know how we got on the topic, but she told me about that, and I was like, yo, that's really weird, and it, it confirmed what I thought. I'm like, we're at one point where they better at posting more diverse people, or is it just like a now issue? So she ends up telling me about that, and I was just like extremely, you know, understandably off-put. I was just like, whoa, so this is receipts behind what I've already suspected about them? So I just wanna reiterate that they literally, as a brand, did nothing wrong to me, like I had no issues with them, they were professional. I did, you know, raise the concern. I typically don't communicate with brands directly, like they, I have a manager and an, and an agent. And so I basically told them, I don't feel comfortable working with this brand because it, I'm not at all pleased with how they represent. I'm not happy with how they represent their page. I can't speak to, I guess, like the actual verbatim responses to that were, but it was very like, oh, well, here's more money. <laughs> You know, like, oh, if she's not comfortable, we'll just pay her more. You know, like they just kept coming back with more deals. Thank you, come again. I have enough money. Thank you so much, sweetie. But like, what that got to do with the issue, fam? So for lashes, I'm gonna wear So Hot. What is this? So Extra Miami? Yeah, So Extra Miami. They were like really, 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 really not trying to let me get out of this contract because they really, 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 really wanted to continue working with me. To be honest, I know that after I do this video, nothing's gonna change. I know it's not, it's not gonna change anything. I love not struggling, uh, living paycheck to paycheck. I love being able to contribute to my family. I love the fact that I can break generational curses, not at the expense of compromising what I believe in and what's important to me. A lot of people think that like most influencers opinions can be bought and I keep telling you guys, this is absolutely not true. Now there are a lot of people who are very easily influenced and are swayed by money and trips and, and PR boxes, both big and small influencers. Let's keep it all the way 100. But yeah, not me. Like I said, they did everything right and they were incredibly easy to work with and they were incredibly accommodating as far as like payments and money and, and opportunities and like giving me creative control and they were easy to work with and all of that. When it came down to, but hey, can we fix this? It was resistance. And I actually wrote out like a statement that my team passed on to them because they were like, we want like very clear examples because we have a contract. I had to do like a set number of like Instagram posts and a set number of videos, which I was still in the midst of when I raised this concern to them. That's where it gets tricky because it's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're not gonna post for us anymore. We've already, and mind you, they already paid me for everything. They already paid me for everything. Prepaid me for everything under the, uh, I guess hopes of like, well, you know, it's been easy so far. We had did a couple deals before and they were like, you know, we trust Jackie, she's gonna deliver. So we'll just pay you all up front this time. I was like, well, you can tell me who to make the check out to and I'll just send the money back. For what I owe though, I'm not paying you back for what I've already done, okay? I've already rendered half the service. Actually I did like at that point 80%, I fulfilled like 80% of the contractual obligations or like something like that. It was pretty high. Like I only had like maybe 
three Instagram posts remaining in like one video. We basically could not meet in the middle. We couldn't come to an agreement where I felt I was comfortable with the responses that they gave me as far as like, okay, are you gonna either change your, you know, switch up your Instagram, diversify a little bit more. And so they took the second option and they were like, well, Jackie can pay us back for what she owes. And so I did. It was a very clean and easy transaction. Ooh, there's just nothing like a fresh lash. I don't know how new or old this is cause like I really do be behind on my PR stuff, but it's this Perfector face palette. It looks really cute. I forgot I did want to use this contour earlier. It actually looks like it would fit my shell. Actually, let's throw it on. Let's put a little bit on there. Wow. I'm just gonna add a little bit on top of what we have already. I'm gonna take the blush in the palette, which looks like a really pretty, actually pinky mauve, pinky mauve. And super matte, I love matte blush. I'm not gonna use the highlighter on the palette. I actually wanna use LeBron's cause I feel like LeBron's would just look really pretty with my hair color. <laughs> and I even busted out my OG packaging. Hello. And then I'm gonna add a little bit on the ball of my nose. After the highlight comes a setting spray. Melt it all in. I'm using this LA Girl liner in the color Coco and I'm lining my lips. And then for my lipstick, I'm gonna take Birthday Suit from Too Faced. I'm gonna finish off with this gloss from Auntie Pat in the color Divine Rose. And that's it. So that pretty much brings me to the end of the video. I haven't really decided for myself whether or not I wanna full on boycott this brand simply because I, I don't know. I, I really don't know where I stand. Definitely won't be working with them anymore. That's for sure. They just don't represent my values and like, you know, the spectrum that I like to see on social media. I still may buy stuff from them. I, I'm not sure I have, to be honest with you, I haven't really in a long time. I mean, this this, this thing has been going on for almost a year now where we, you know, expressed our concerns and we ended up getting out of the contract. It's definitely not new. Two things I'm very certain of is I won't be posting for them and I definitely won't be working with them. Unless of course they change and they get like new management or something. Some got changed, bruh. Please don't go in the name of me, go on their Instagram handles or the Twitter and curse them out. Please don't do that. Do that on your own, but don't do it on behalf of me. I just feel like if you want to really see a brand be canceled, because you know, everybody loves using the word cancel, but not actually. I don't think people actually know what canceling a brand actually looks like. You have to be willing to sacrifice a lot. I'm not doing this video to like go on a cancel crusade. It's really just me expressing what I look for in brands when I work with them. Hopefully I properly expressed myself the correct way as far as what I meant about the body standard. Um, it's not to shame anybody that gets work done. Obviously I'm, I'm no stranger to it, but I just feel like when it's, when you're willing to risk your life, when you're willing to do it illegally, that's a different topic. And we have to also look at why are people doing those things? What are they influenced by? You know, Is it a brand that I'm contributing to by posting about them? If so, I don't wanna be a part of that. If you feel the same way I have, or maybe you had a hunch, maybe you kind of like felt the same way and never really voiced it. I would just say, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Stop supporting those brands. Stop buying from them. I don't really feel like I'm saying anything that people don't already know. Maybe you just haven't noticed it. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys for hanging out on today's video. If you wanna watch another one, I'm just gonna leave you here. And since we're on the topic of unpopular opinions, I'll just link another unpopular opinion video. Why the hell not?